Hi, everyone. Welcome to another Clean Machine Live. I'm Jeff Palmer, CEO and founder of Clean Machine. The video, this video <clears throat> is for informational and educational purposes only and is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. So we're going to talk about four different factors. Actually, one has five. So four to five different health factors that if you use could make a dramatic difference in your health and in your survival rate. That's right. You could add up to 12 to 14 years to your life just by doing these simple four to five different health indices. So what are those four factors? Before we jump into this, I'm going to talk about the very first study that is actually a very recent study. This study was, uh, I'll put it up on the screen here for just published in February 8th of 2022. So this is a brand new study released. It's called Estimating the Impact of Food Choices on Life Expectancy. It's a modeling study. So they're calculating in a computer model, basically, if we know from the data that approximately this action will contribute to this, what will that cumulatively affect and what are the probabilities over a period of time? Um, so, yeah, so what did they find? Um, well, I'm going to pull this up on the screen. Um, so this is this is the article that uh, led into the study. The study was the first thing that I had on the screen there. This article shows that uh, sustained dietary habits that include more legumes or beans and whole grains could increase life and expectancy. And that's exactly what they found in the research, that actually beans and grains had the highest contribution to prolonging life beans and grains. So getting those black beans and rice or lentils and 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 um, and and a nice quinoa or something like that, combining those beans and grains can be very helpful for you um, and and even add more years to your life. Obviously, replacing meat products, uh, animal products, dairy, fish, eggs, chicken and poultry, um, with these beans, grains, greens, these types of foods can dramatically shift how your microbiome works, the cause of disease states. So let's take a look and see what they were talking about in the, in the uh, study. Um, so the study, uh, the article reads, um, <clears throat> shifting from a typical Western diet, the standard American diet, or SAD, as we like to call it, because it is a SAD diet. Um, the standard American diet was one that includes shifting it from that to one that includes more beans, grains, nuts, and less processed and red meat could add years to your life expectancy. Now, this was published in PLOS or PLOS, the PLOS study uh, in, in medicine. And what they found is that, for an example, a young adult who made these changes could add more than a decade to their life expectancy. That's 10 years to your added to your life, whether you're male or female, <clears throat> doesn't matter. But what's interesting is that it was actually even more for men. So about 10.7 years added to your life expectancy for women, but uh, up to 13 years added to your life expectancy for men, simply by changing from a more plant-based diet away from animal products. So substituting the animal products you're eating with more beans, grains, greens, nuts, seeds, this type of thing. Um, I, you know, I'm surprised that these studies just don't come right out and say it. <laughs> Replace the animal foods with plant foods and you'll live a lot longer. So let's dig down into what is the causal relationship of it. But before I get into that, um, the article has a really cool tool for you can use. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and pull that, uh, that tool up here on the screen. It's called the Food for the number four, healthy life calculator. So you can input your age, your your what you eat and stuff like this and see how much more you're gaining in life by making choices. Then you can alter the choices in the calculator and see how it either improves 
or lowers your lifespan. So it's a really kind of a cool tool. I'm going to go ahead and put it up here on the screen. Just a second. Let me copy and paste that into the comment section. And then you guys can use this food calculator. I'll pull it up on the screen too so it's on the video. And here it is. So again, it's called the, uh, you can see at the bottom of the screen, the Food for Healthy Life Calculator. You can actually probably Google search that, but the link's on the screen for you to type it into as well. Really kind of cool because it can calculate through modeling, basically what your food choices do to your life expectancy. I think this is a really empowering tool because it shows you how directly your food choices can affect your probability for living a healthy and longer life. All right, so let's dig into why that causes uh, such a, a big difference in life expectancy, which leads us to the next study, which I think has a great name to it. And <laughs> here it is, I'll pull it up on the screen. So the study is called Healthy Living is the Best Revenge. What an awesome title for a study. It's actually a, a, pers a perspective looking into the investigation of um, nutrition and how it affects it on, based on the nutrition pot stamp study. Um, so, but I love that. A healthy living is really the best revenge, but it's empowering. That means you can choose how healthy you want to live. You can choose how long and healthy you want to live. So not just uh, longevity, but um, lifespan quality, not just quantity. All right. Um, so what did this study say? Well, it looked at four different factors. Number one, not smoking. Obviously, we know that's a major problem because it causes lung cancer. Number two, maintaining a healthy weight. Now, they use BMI, which I don't like because, look, I carry a lot of muscle. If I have a lot of muscle on my frame, my weight goes up. So I'm at 185, 190 pounds on a five foot nine frame. That actually puts me as overweight, <laughs> not overweight. As you can see by the hollowing of my cheeks, I'm low body fat, but that's BMI because it goes by directly by the ratio of your weight to your height, and your gender and age. So that's not the best because those of us who carry extra muscle, BMI doesn't work so well. So I want to emphasize, I rechanged that. They put healthy BMI. I think it's more important, healthy body weight. That means how much body fat you're actually carrying, especially internal fat. That's called trunk fat. Uh, this is the fat that surrounds our, uh, our, our visceral fat that surrounds our organs, our heart, our liver. Fatty liver syndrome can be a real problem because it can cause a whole cascade of negative health events. So you want to keep a healthy body fat ratio to muscle ratio. And the better you have uh, a muscle to fat ratio, the more healthy you're probably going to be overall. Getting that body weight down not just body weight, but fat weight down is more important than overall just body weight. Okay, number three is exercise. Yes, this is so important because exercise, it's not just about uh, exercising is, is the way to lose weight. It, it, it's not. You actually, uh, if you're looking at the scale weight, if you're adding muscle, you're actually gaining weight. So when you change the fat to muscle, muscle is higher density. So the same square inch of muscle weighs more than a square inch of body fat. Um, so, you know, you, you, when you trade out uh, the amount of uh, body fat that you have for the amount of muscle that you have, you actually can gain weight on the scale. So don't go by weight scale when you're, especially if you're starting to work out with weights or with resistance style training, which is the best to really send that whole cascade of events. These studies actually talk about this. You need moderate to vigorous and, and the emphasis was on vigorous. And I talked about that in the uh, type two diabetes studies that when they increase the intensity of the exercise, the uh, rates of diabetes uh, sank tremendously, hugely. And this was the American Diabetic Association. They put people on the American diabetic diet 
and they found it was about 60% of the people weren't getting success on their diet alone, but when they doubled the exercise, just the exercise, didn't change the diet at all, the American Diabetic Association's diet for type 2 diabetes, when they just increased, doubled the amount of exercise, almost all of the people got results within three to six months and got out of the diabetic range. So this is how important it is because there's a whole cascade of biochemical effects that happen when you start to exercise, not just about body fat. It's about uh, reducing inflammation. It's about increasing a whole bunch of different chemicals that are going on in the body that help the body process sugar better so it doesn't store, doesn't uh, convert to AGEs, these, these very uh, toxic chemicals um, that can, can cause damage to your eyesight, damage to your brain, damage to your liver, damage to your joints. Working out helps almost all of these factors. Then they say it in there, three and a half hours or more per week, which is about 45 minutes a day for five days a week. And that's what I really suggest for most people. If you can get um, anywhere from 30 to 45 minutes a day of good, intense workout, ideally with some resistance training. And look, it doesn't matter how much the weight, it's the weight that suits you at your age, your gender that matters. It's can you get some intensity out of that? Are you getting a response from that? Don't worry so much about the amount of the weight, worry about how much you're putting into it because that's how much you're gonna get out of the exercise. Work out with intensity, put some effort into that, work out a nice sweat, get, get yourself going. That'll get all your cardiovascular events going in the right direction and make uh, what you eat a little bit more forgiving. Okay, and the fourth one, remember not smoking, healthy weight, exercise, and number four is eating a majorly plant-based diet, high in fruits, vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, all the plant stuffs, right? And, and I'm gonna go over like three or four different studies to show you, it's just not a one-off study that I'm cherry picking and go, oh, here's great results on this study, but there's a bunch of other studies that don't show that. No, this is a pretty consistent every single time and every single time they're basically coming up with the four to five different ones. The fifth one that they talk about is watch your alcohol because alcohol is known to cause cancer in excess. Our body can process some alcohol, but when we get up to um, more than two drinks, that's when alcohol starts to become a problem because our um, glutathione. So our body has a way of breaking down alcohol and it's not alcohol that really does the damage. Alcohol actually breaks down into another chemical um, that is very toxic. Now I won't bore you with the chemical names, but our body has a way of breaking that down. It takes glutathione, which is our master antioxidant of the body and sticks it to that, carries it to the liver, and then the liver secretes an enzyme to break that down into basically acetic acid. Acetic acid, more commonly known as vinegar, <laughs> is totally harmless and actually helpful for us. So we just wanna get it out of that toxic, uh, it's called uh, acid aldehyde, acetaldehyde, similar to formaldehyde, which preserves and is very toxic to the human body, those aldehyde molecules that it breaks down to. So it's not alcohol really per se that is doing most of the damage. Most of the damage is done when it converts down into acetaldehyde. And our body has a good efficient way of getting that out of the system because our gut is producing alcohol all the time. So our body has alcohol in it almost all day, every day, based on the food that we consume. And so it's really not an issue. Our body can handle it. It's when we get into higher and higher amounts of it, that body says, well, we don't have that much enzyme. We don't have that much glutathione. We can't detoxify it out of the body. And then this uh, acid aldehyde starts to circulate in the bloodstream, can cause damage to the brain, where you get a headache from or hangover, uh, cause damage to the liver, lots of tissues and can stimulate the growth of cancer cells. So that's what we don't want. That's why that fifth one is so strong is moderate alcohol. One to two or less drinks per day doesn't seem to have as uh, a negative impact as uh, anything more than that. That's because our body can detoxify that fairly well. Okay, so let's dig into the results of what doing those four things will actually do. Not just adding 10 to 12 to your lives, but why is it adding 10 to 12 years to your life? Well, this is why. And the results are pretty 
<laughs> pretty astounding. I'm going to put them up on the screen here because these are these results are shocking. <laughs> All right, let's put this up on the screen. Oh, wrong one. Okay, here are the results. Up to 83% lower risk of developing any chronic disease. 93% lower risk of developing type 2 diabetes. 81% reduced risk of heart attacks and a 50% lower chance of stroke. Well, these are all the major cancer, the major killers of, of humans in America. It, you wonder if you've got four out of the five top causes of death here uh, on the screen and you're reducing 80 to 90% risk rate of that. Of course, you're going to live longer because you're not dead. I, you know, I, I laugh, but it, it's sad that Americans are eating a basically disease causing diet. Um, and a high animal based diet is a disease causing diet. And it's really clear. There's there's the results right on the screen, right in front of you, that consuming more plants prevents these from happening. It not only promotes health, but when you substitute the negative animal food products for the positive plant products, you're going to get dramatically different results, as you can see right there on the screen. Up to 83% less risk of developing any chronic disease. Oh, it's huge. That's why it's so different. Now, the next uh, the next thing I want to talk about is like, okay, but wait a minute. I, you know, I'm just in my 60th year of life. Is it, is it going to matter? What if I'm an older person? I'm, I'm starting out now. Well, this part is really cool. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up on the screen here. It's in the comments section. No, I'll get it right here. Okay. So what if you're over 50? Well, this is a really nice study it's, um, that says the impact of healthy lifestyles on life expectancy in the U.S. population. All right, let's go ahead and put that one up on the screen. So I'm showing you a whole bunch of different studies to show you I'm not cherry picking. It's not just a one-off study that may be contradicted by other studies. This is constant, regular information out there. And this is pretty amazing. I'll pull it up on the screen for you in a second. But this one, you know, the healthy impact. So it's looking at what is the impact and, and does it matter? Oops, wrong one again. All right. And wrong one again. There we go. <laughs> right. Impact of healthy lifestyle factors on life expectancy in the population. Now, this is really important because, you know, for those of you who are over 40, over 50, even over 60, will it matter? You know, because I say I talk to some people in the gym and I'm like, I'm 60. I'm, yeah, but you've been doing it for a long time. I, I you know, I'm just starting out. It's not going to even matter. I'm going to go ahead and eat meat and stuff like that. It doesn't matter because it's not going to make a difference. No, it can make a big difference. Check this out. You can read it right off the screen if you want. The projected life expectancy at age 50 was an, on average 14 years longer among female Americans with the five uh, lower risk factors compared to zero risk factors. And for men, it was 12.2. So 12 to 14 years later, living longer. Even if you start at 50 years of age, there's no excuse. Don't use age as an excuse. I'm too old. It doesn't matter. It does matter. If I told you you get to have not only longer life, but longer healthy life, enjoy life, enjoy all that money that you worked so hard your entire life you know, doing. Spend an extra 10 to 12 years watching your kids grow up being with your the people that you love, hanging out with friends, celebrating life, having a good time. 10 to 12 years, 14 years up to, for women, um, more quality life. Why would you want to throw that away? Just simply because of the taste buds in your mouth? Are you serious? You're giving up all that? All, giving up being there for your family, being there for your loved ones, your spouse? being there for your friends and all the fun times that you can have right here. Uh, 
What about all that money that you made, all the savings, the house you have? You're not going to be here to enjoy it just because you're trading 10 years to 14 years of your life just to consume, what, a burger? When there are plant-based burgers out there that taste the same, are nutritionally better for you, and can add 10 to 12 years to your life, it's a no-brainer burger. <laughs> yes. So there are so many benefits and this is this is why i do what i do this is why i formed clean machine i want you to 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 keep with those four to five keep your body clean don't smoke don't drink but more importantly exercise eat plant-based and uh what's the fourth one uh oh um maintaining your healthy weight and of course if you're eating a, a plant-based diet and exercising you're most likely going to have a healthy weight unless you're overeating and you're eating a whole bunch of vegan junk food. Don't do that. Every once in a while, treat. Okay, that's fine. But stay consistent. Remember my three rules. Consistency. Work out and stay the true course on your diet. Keep the vast majority 80-20 rule. If 80% of your diet is good whole plant foods, you're on track for making some positive health gains intensity intensity in the workout remember that diabetic study that showed just when they increased the intensity of the workouts uh, almost completely got rid of diabetes when three to six months so and finally nutrient density making sure that the food choices that you make like clean green protein or different real high nutrient dense nutrient rich foods greens fruits and berries nuts and seeds beans and grains as you've seen in this research um that they can do amazing factors at any age now this is funny because he, here it goes even further and i'm going to put this up on the screen because it's great it's never too late to change So what about even if you're really old, 60 or whatever? Well, they did that. They looked at this changing from a typical diet to an optimized diet, which is mostly plant-based diet and, and including those four different things, exercise, no smoking, and watching your weight. 60 years of age could still increase their life expectancy by up to 11 years. <laughs> oh my God, 12 and a half years for men. And 80 year olds, eight zero, could even gain four and a half years just from dietary changes alone. Look, it's right there for you. Quality of life, quantity of life. Choose the plants over the animal foods and you will succeed. Now, the, the question that I get, obviously, for men, it's like, guys, don't you want to live longer? <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but I can't gain muscle. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> I'm like, seriously, you still believing that myth? Come on, let's stop. Let's stop hurting ourselves. Let's stop hurting the animals. Let's stop hurting the environment. Let's make the changes that make a difference. You're going to like the changes, how they affect you and how they affect all of those around you. Be there for your, your the people who love you and care about you and enjoy life. Be there to enjoy what you've done, all the work you've done in your lifetime don't have it end in a disease state that sits you in a hospital, takes all your money, and leaves you penniless, broke, and broken. That's this. You don't have to make that choice. It doesn't have to end that way. It's up to you. You make that choice. I'm here to help you make that choice. I'm here to inspire you to make that choice. Choose better health for yourself and pay it forward. Inspire others. Be the example for others and inspire others. Thank you for listening. We'll be here every week. Uh, we will be at the uh, Vegan Street Fair coming up in uh, three weeks in uh, Los Angeles. So if you are out of the Los Angeles Vegan Street Fair, come by the booth, say hi, meet uh, Corinne, myself, and my lovely wife, and enjoy some free samples. Um, I hope to see you out there. If you're out there, if you're watching this before then, if not, we will also be at the Plant-Based World Expo coming up in September. Um, so if you're up in New York City and near the Javits Center, 
and September 8th and 9th, we'll be at the Plant-Based World Expo. Uh, we'll be have a nice 10 by 20 booth too, and we'll have some athletes there as well, including Corinne Sutton, three-time pro bodybuilder, vegan, and all-natural drug free. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope this is empowering information that gives you information to make better choices for yourself, for your health, and for your family, for the planet that we live on, and for the animals. Thank you for watching.